The Hedge starts right now. Here's Andrew Walker. What's up? Happy Tuesday. Tuesday, April the 26th. This is uh, episode number two of The Hedge. I'm Andrew Walker. The Hedge is presented by Boston Pizza. With more sports bars than anyone else in Canada, it's the best place to follow all your action, all the screens, all the wings, and boston size beers on tap. What more could a fan ask for? And now for a limited time, get the Bud and Burger deal for only $17.99 only at your local Boston Pizza. I'm Andrew Walker. He is John Hicks. Congratulations, and, first of all. Ah, we hey, we got it done. I needed, I needed a, uh, I needed a cold pint at Boston Pizza <laughs> last night after, <laughs> after being in here all day. But uh, but we got it done. Uh, and, and again, thanks to anyone out there who watches, subscribes, downloads, or shared episode one. Hopefully, you do the same for episode two. Tell your friends. A lot of people uh, asked me how did it go. Right, that's kind of the yeah. Uh, how did it go, and. I, I think it went okay. I pretty well. Um, it was it was fun to be back. It was rewarding to be back, and it had been a while. And for the most part, I, I thought it was like riding a bike. Uh, and I and I even this took me back. I even had a few nasty uh, direct messages from people <laughs> in Vancouver, which uh, just uh, man, it, that city is relentless. Memories, like, re- relentless. Remember the the zombies in Twenty Eight Days Later, where they're just. <laughs> Just they never stop. That's that's Vancouver sports fans, man. When they're miserable, just they never stop. Uh, but yesterday was fun. You know what the worst moment though was yesterday? What? It was kind of brought to my attention later, and this is partly me being uh, out of the game for a little bit. Maybe it's partly me being nervous, or it's uh, partly uh, me being boomer as f. Um, <laughs> when I came on and we're talking about because I, I I share how you can subscribe and and the website. And when I introduced the website, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, go to www. <laughs> I'm like, go to www.thehedgepod.com. It's like, dude, you don't have to say three W's on the air. Like you're, when I'm, it happened, I'm thir- I, st- I know it's so, it's so dumb. I'm 37. I'm not 67. But anyway, I'll do better. I, it was it was boomer. I I admit. Um, but go to thehedgepod.com. You know how many W's are. It's 2022. So embarrassing. Uh, my Twitter is at AWOX official. And if you want to get in touch with the show, uh, the email address is talk at thehedgepod.com. Uh, give us your pros. Uh, give us your cons. Um, if you're from Vancouver, give us your hate. <laughs> If you missed our Jays chat with Dan Schulman yesterday, you can check that on yesterday's show uh, on the YouTube channel and where you get your podcasts as well. Uh, and we also chatted with uh, my friend, uh, really smart sports better, Bick Nazar, and we made our best bets yeah, of the day. Awesome. We'll, we'll do the same thing again today, uh, later on in the show. And for a podcast that does market itself um, or, or part of it around sports betting, it was a pretty good start. It was we, it was perfect. Yeah, so we did we did our, our player of the day, which is brought to you by Dauber Hockey. We'll point you in the right direction for um, the best player props tonight, which you can find on Cool Bet. Maybe it's a guy hitting a home run, a guy scoring a goal, a pitcher making strikeouts. Uh, yesterday, I was on Alex DeBrincat. He scored. Yesterday, Bick was on Max Scherzer over seven and a half strikeouts. That hit. And then we'll do our best bet of the day. For me, it was the Raptors under 211. Which hit, and for him, it was the Brooklyn Nets over 110. So that hit. So it was a perfect night on night one of our best bets. Yes. You don't, you can hold your applause. <laughs> like, like, let's act like we've been here before as we go over tonight. But anyway, it was a good start. Um, and speaking of sports betting, I want to mention this too, because before we get to some headlines, uh, you can reach us at talk at the And one email that we did get yesterday caught my eye. So I wanted to get into this a little bit. It was from Jamie. He said, I enjoyed the show, but I am a sports betting newbie. Can you tell me what plus and minus means? And when we're talking about uh, when we're talking about the odds, um, you know, say this team is plus you know, 250 or this team is minus 150. So I don't want to do a whole workshop here or anything like that, but I'll, I'll get into it briefly. And whenever we do talk about the odds, um, and all them you can find on CoolBet, our sportsbook partner. A plus generally indicates an underdog line, and a minus generally indicates a favorite line, which takes a little more overhead to bet. For example, 
Raptors win last night. What a good win for the Raptors. So they're now down three games to two in this series. So the Raptors now, still an underdog to win this series, are plus 505 to win their series against the Sixers. So they got to win the next two, and they're plus 505 to do so. Meaning, for every $100 you were to bet, you'd win back 505. So like 5 to 1, which is pretty good. It's actually not a bad bet, honestly, uh, as Philly is just imploding on itself right now. Meanwhile, the Sixers, still up three games to two, still with the possible worst-case scenario, game seven in their own barn, are a heavy favorite. They're minus 667 to win this series. That's a big number. Meaning, if you wanted to win $100, you'd have to risk $667 to do so. Mm -hmm. In this case, not worth it. But anyway... Hope that answers the question. That's what plus and minus means. Uh, if you have any more questions, hit us up at talk at thehedgepod.com or, of course, the website www.thehedgepod.com. <laughs> Let's get to some headlines. Let's do it. The Toronto Raptors uh, last night stayed alive. As mentioned, Raptors are alive. Um, with a convincing win over Philadelphia in Game 5. We'll talk a little bit about this uh, with our friend Julie Stewart-Binks, who's coming up later on the show. I said on the show yesterday, I, I just I did not see the Raptors winning this game. I, I thought it would be low scoring. It was, but they got it done. And I, I, I guess we just know a little better than to uh, not believe in this Raptors team. There's no Fred Van Vliet last night, but they got it done in convincing fashion. And Philly, if you've ever been there, it is a rough sports town. Mm-hmm. They they booed Santa Claus at an Eagles game. <laughs> like, they're the worst. And so right now, you can imagine the dialogue going on in Philly, um, in the newspapers, on on the, the call-in shows. This is a shorthanded Raptors team that was down 3 nothing, and now it's 3-2 going back to Toronto for game six. Yeah. The Sixers are, I'm not going to say they're in trouble, but they're in a little bit of trouble. That's a big win. It's going to be a huge game six in Toronto on Thursday. The Toronto Blue Jays, they get a grand slam from Bo Bichette as they win game one of their series uh, against the Boston Red Sox last night. And uh, they're back at it tonight. Um, It will be Kevin Gosman against Nick Pavetta at Rogers Center. Bo Bichette, terrific player and, and was obviously struggling early this year. And this is one of the things I do like about baseball um, and why it is hard to be a baseball fan sometimes because it's not it's not hockey. It's certainly not the NFL where you play 16. I guess it's now 17 games. You don't get instant satisfaction of hot takes where like, oh, this guy had a bad game that 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 means he's bad. Bo Bichette is a terrific player. And, you know, at the end of the year, his numbers will be X. He will probably be be top five in the league in hitting and top five in, in base hits. Um It is not a bad thing if you have a good depth type of team to have guys that are streaky because someone has to carry the mail. And yes, Bo Bichette's had a rough first month of the season. But guess who might lead the entire league in hitting in June? It might be that guy. As long as you have, you know, two or three guys carrying your team at various times. And then you might have that one month or two month stretch of the season or come playoffs where everybody's hot. And guess what happens then? Then you never lose. Mm -hmm. That's what happened with the Blue Jays in 2015, right? It took them a while to get going. And then in the second half, I think they went 45 and 14, which is not even a real stat. (laughs) Um, But Bo Bichette grand slam last night. And and it's only been a few weeks into the season, but uh, it was a long time coming. That's a big hit last night to give them a a, a 6-2 win. Uh, we are less than a week away, about a week away from the Stanley Cup playoffs. And uh, yesterday, kind of after our show, the Edmonton Oilers getting some, um, well, potentially bad news, I suppose. Their best defenseman, Darnell Nurse, 24 minutes a night. He got injured on Friday, uh, left that game against the Colorado Avalanche, a game uh, that they did win. And the Oilers announced that he will not play the rest of the regular season. That includes tonight in Pittsburgh, as the Oilers are still trying to clinch second spot in the Pacific and and home ice in the first round. They're just going to need one win in the last three games to do it. Uh, So the the, kind of the idea, and this is where it gets kind of quiet, is he going to be ready for game one of that series? Yeah. Uh, They need him, obviously, that goes without saying. But this was kind of my my take um, when I heard this news. I do find it funny, and I talked yesterday about how being a sports fan has changed a little bit, and I don't 
always like the ways that it did change, the obsession over you know, things like the salary cap. And I'm not an idiot. I know that the, the salary cap is incredibly in, important uh, when you're trying to build a contender. But, I mean, listen, and every fan base has this guy, but you listen to Oiler fans once in a while, and there's a discourse around Darnell Nurse because he, he signed a big deal. He's their highest paid defenseman, and he's getting paid like he's, you know, in the league of the Headmans and the Yossis and these elite guys. And he's he's very good, and he's a great skater, and he gaps up so well, and he chips in on offense, and he's really physical, which is hard to find in today's day and age. But he's not a Norris Trophy candidate at yet. Like, he, he's not. And because he makes a lot of money, fans can get a little bit, uh, hold this resentment because, oh, instantly he's overpaid, so he becomes a bit of a whipping boy. Yeah. And and so when a guy like this plays 24 minutes a night and gets injured, I don't like that he's injured, but I like sometimes that some fans have to check themselves and be like, oh, maybe it does not matter as much as I think what someone makes because look at our team with him and, and look at our team without him. And there's no salary cap in the playoffs, and you try winning a round – Without Darnell Nurse, this team needs him back. Plays a lot of minutes. A lot of minutes. Uh, it's a busy night around the NHL tonight. We're going to hit some of this in our uh, betting uh, segment coming up. But there are playoff implications tonight. Last night was really quiet. What a day to launch the show. It was just Philadelphia and, uh, and Chicago. But on the schedule tonight, the big game is Vegas and Dallas. As uh, the Golden Knights are in trouble when it comes to the wild card. They really need a win in Dallas tonight. Dallas can clinch with a uh, regulation win. As you see, Nashville is 94, Dallas is 93, Vegas has 90. Nashville plays the Calgary Flames tonight. We'll get into that, so they can clinch with a victory as well. Vancouver's hanging on by just a thread. <laughs> they play Seattle later tonight, and the game might be meaningless unless everything kind of goes their way early on. And of course, the Oilers, as mentioned, uh, taking on the Pittsburgh Penguins tonight, so it's a big night in the NHL. Uh, and finally, there was an interesting article uh, up today. Our good friend uh, Mark Spector wrote it, and uh, he questioned. We've we've been talking about the Hart Trophy race, and he questioned. Um, he called it Connor McDavid fatigue or, or Oilers fatigue. And when we talk about the Hart race, and there are legitimately like seven guys that you could make a case for being maybe not the Hart Trophy winner, but a Hart Trophy finalist. And it does feel a little bit uh, like some people are finding a a reason to not you know consider. Connor McDavid just because we've kind of been there and done that I love the heart conversation uh, this is going to sound a little critical or rooted in maybe exasperation and it's not every year unless it's one guy just running away with the trophy and you can see McDavid last season he was unanimous he was a unanimous winner with mm -hmm. 100 votes we go through this conversation every year what is the heart trophy what is the criteria is it the best player is it the player who had the best season is is it um, traditionally, the player that is just most valuable to his team. You take this guy off Team X, and what does the team look like? Um, and the answer is different to everybody. The, the answer is a little, uh, a little customized. Um, and it's the same debate every year. You know, how can it be Matthews when he has Marner? How can it be McDavid when he has Dreitzel? How can it be Kucherov when he has Stamkos? Can a goalie win it? That's what the Vezina is for. Can a defenseman win it? That's what the Norris is for. Uh, and I, I, I'm here. It's the same thing every year, but I'm here for it every year. I enjoy it every year because I do think it's a good debate. I, though I do get a little annoyed when people have non-objective opinions. You know, I think this guy should win it. Why? Because he plays for your favorite team. I that drives me crazy. But that's why it's not a fan vote, and that's why it is a media vote. And I don't, I don't have all the answers, but I do agree with the point that that Specter made in his article today, and that is. Uh, quite simply this, I'm not saying Connor McDavid should absolutely win the Hart Trophy, but let's look at this objectively. This is um, the best player in the league. Doesn't mean he's going to win the Hart every year, but he's the best player in the league having, statistically, his best season in the league ever, which is hilarious. He's probably going to win the Art Ross again. So, you don't have to vote for this guy if you're a member of the Professional Hockey Writers Association. You don't have to vote for McDavid to win the heart. That's not required. But the best offensive player in the game, having his best offensive season of his career, winning another Art Ross, 
he better be on your final ballot. And if it gets to the point where people are fatigued or bored of McDavid or want to help their guy by leaving McDavid off, he doesn't have to win. But that's called collusion. Mm. Like that's, that's not allowed. McDavid needs to be on your top five no matter what. That said, um, you know, I, I go back and forth on all this. So here is my here's here's my ballot. All right. I do not get a vote. Uh, but if I did, <laughs> I would probably go like this. Number five would be Roman Yossi of the Nashville Predators. Number four, the guy I talked about yesterday, Kirill Kaprizov. Yeah. Number three, maybe this is peer pressure, but I'd go Jonathan Huberto at number three. Then McDavid, two. And I, I would give my heart trophy vote this year to Austin Matthews. Um, are the Leafs a playoff team without him? Yeah, probably. But he just had that stretch, um, you know, a month ago, well, really over the last two months, where he kind of got himself in a position to win the Rocket Richard, and he put that team on his back. So so this year, it was a remarkable season for Matthews. To me, he's number one. McDavid's number two, but it's close. Uh, make sure to hit us up on the website, uh, thehedgepod.com. You can subscribe to our YouTube and our podcast there as well. You are listening to The Hedge, presented by Boston Pizza. Our next guest on The Hedge is one of my favorite people. We'll get to her in a second, and she is brought to you by CoolBet. CoolBet is the most transparent sportsbook in Canada. Who else shows you every bet they accept in real time? CoolBet is different than the sites you've used in the past. Hedge your bet with CoolBet. And uh, we go to uh, New York uh, to chat with Julie Stewart-Binks, host of Drinks with Binks on Fubo TV. Uh, always love catching up. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Also, such kind of words. You, either you're talking about someone that's coming up after me or me. That is very nice of you. I'll just think it's me. Um, congratulations on the new show. It's like super legit. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, wow. Th- thank you. Like, what? Thank you. Like, I mean, a producer and like music and stuff. I was like, I don't have that. Yes, well, I, I mean, I, I've always thought that that your stuff is in, incredibly legit. Drinks with Binks is one of my favorite shows because you've managed to meld like you, your love of sports broadcasting with your alcoholism, and it all just kind of came together in a in a perfect, uh, just in a perfect potpourri. Honestly, this isn't the first time that two random decisions have worked out for me where. I did an undergrad degree in phys ed because it was the best subject in high school and you had to pick another degree to do as well. So I took a arts degree in drama. I picked phys ed and drama and also it worked out really well right now, but that was, those are the two best subjects in high school. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do that. What am I doing right now? I'm doing a TV show where I can also drink on it. So it's like, I just think of things I like and then just do them. But then as what I learned from Jimmy Kimmel, is the thing you like to do becomes the thing you hate to do. So, you know, we're not there yet. <laughs> Julie Stewart-Binks is our guest on The Hedge. New York has a, a really interesting cross-section of of sports fans for different sports. Uh, probably a, a uh, more aggressive sports town even than New York is Philadelphia. And they are eating their own right now because they were up. The 76ers were up 3-0 on the Toronto Raptors. And in that kind of Toronto Raptor championship pedigree type of way they found their pride in game four and they went on the road with no Fred Van Vliet last night and won game five and all of a sudden I thought the best line um, I think I don't know if, if he wrote it or if he regurgitated it but Steve Simmons says the Raptors lead this series two games to three and that that might be how they're feeling in Philly today definitely and you know I can't fault Philly for leaving the game when they did early also Doc Rivers had essentially pulled everyone from the game at that point too, late in the fourth quarter. But it's, it kind of reminds me of that Toronto mindset of like, like they are hard on their fans. Like Toronto fans are on the Leafs. They're not ruthless on the Raptors. Like they are, but they're not like, there's a very completely different vibe. It's like when, you know, if you go down three, nothing in a series in your Toronto, you're like, everyone is just like, mortgage like putting their house for sale and they're like moving out of town they're just like we can't do this the raptors are down and it's like there's still there's still a chance because there's still another game and then they win that game and there's this like amazing belief because we didn't see it in the 29th 
there were a couple other guys there. I forget. Maybe Corey Leonard and Kyle Lowry could help out, <laughs> yeah. especially Kawhi. So this is like a little bit thing with house money. Like even just being here in a season like this. So I-, I love watching them because it just it feels as though they. I mean, now like Charles Barkley said, he's like, this is a seven. This is going seven games. Like this is. There's, I mean, there's, it would be very difficult for Philadelphia to win game six with like the Raptors just rolling right now with the idea that like, okay, you have Pascal Siakam and Scotty Barnes is on fire now. And just even when they announced him as rookie of the year, it felt like he moved to a new level. And a lot of these guys are just like playing as the team. Like we, we look at that. We see superstars go silent in playoffs and in championship games and like all this stuff. But then this team has this like incredible ability. Maybe that's like the Nick Nurse effect. I'm not sure, but I, I love watching them. And my boyfriend is a Knicks fan and he's just like, how are you guys like able to be good all the time? Even when you don't have like these stars, like it's infuriating to other teams. But um, I mean, Hey, gotta love it. Even if they lose, it's like they won two. They already got real estate in Philly's head. Well, so. Shaq on, on the same panel with, with Barkley had said uh, famously before the series this was going to be a sweep, and then Raptors fans yeah. came for him, and then the Sixers were up three games to nothing, and he looked pretty good. So I- even the fact that they came back and made this a series, I think, is, yeah, you're right, it's, it's a bit of a win. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, we talk a lot about, or I've talked a lot about um, the Western Conference in the NHL, and I, I need to pay a little bit more attention, I think, to some of these matchups in the East uh, but we've known about them for so long. It's been the top eight forever, and all eight teams in the East have 100 points. So I'll go to you. Um, all these teams look pretty good, and on one hand, I don't I don't know if I feel bad for the Toronto Maple Leafs, but there's a really good opportunity that they lose in the first round again because yeah. they play Tampa, and Tampa's really good. Who are you looking at in the East as we sit about a week away from the postseason? Honestly... I would have to say the New York Rangers. Like it's there's as we know, this last stretch and these couple games are are are, are very precarious because it's like you don't want to get injured, but you also want to go in with momentum. So like any game, anything can happen. But I do believe with New York's goaltending, the acquisitions they made at the trade deadline with a number of guys you mentioned the Western Conference coming in, Andrew Kopp, you have Tyler Mott and Justin Braun, like these guys coming in and instantly making an impact, especially Cop and Panarin on the same line. It's like, oh my, wow, chef's kiss. They look so good together. And those are just the acquisitions. Like even before that, Chris Kreider having an incredible season this year and seeing some of the younger guys even step up and step in. And, you know, it has been a little bit odd in terms of how Cabo cago has been, or Alexis, Alexi Lafreniere, but like Adam Fox and, and Truba, like they have, they have a lot of young guys, but they have a lot of guys that are really, really good. And I pair that with goaltending. And I know that there was a lot sort of being made about Igor having a little bit of like sort of a minor slump before, but, but he has proven that he's able to beat this guy. And like, he's done it in the KHL playoffs. He hasn't done it in the NHL playoffs because there hasn't been like a normal year. But I, I actually put money on the Rangers to win the cup because I think that they will. Again, matchups are going to be what determines all of this. And I don't know. I Seeing Florida win the cup would be like a banana sandwich. But like I was evaluating their lineup too. And I'm like, no, Rangers got a better lineup than that. And even if Bob's is like killing it. I just think that that the one side of the, with the Atlantic, with Toronto, either meeting Tampa, which we'll find out tonight, or we should, or Boston, like you, you, uh, you, it's, I don't know about this one. I think you should just say like, don't, don't stress about winning a playoff series this year. Cause you're up against either two times Stanley cup champion defending mm-hmm. or the Bruins that own you. I, I was guys, I see you doing your TikTok videos and, and you are from Toronto and you have that Leafs jersey. And I was wondering the psychology, um, if you would be or a Leafs fan, are you just as equally devastated if you lose the first round? It's such a bad look, but it's kind of forgivable if you lose to Tampa. Maybe it's more about yeah. how you lose. But on, on, the, on the other hand, and not that I'm trying to drum up all this Leafs optimism or anything like that. If the Leafs manage to beat Tampa in round one and, oh, my God, this huge monkey is off your back, I the Leafs could go the rest of the way. 
I, yes. I, I don't think that's impossible. I think that in, in the rare occasion, and again, nothing, the puck hasn't dropped. We don't even know who they're playing. But if they did win a first round series against a two time defending Stanley Cup champion, just went to the White House, probably feeling pretty good, a reminder that they are the champs and they've been playing well down the stretch. That would give you so much mojo going into your next matchup, which would be Florida if things sort of collide that way. But it, it, it kind of sets itself up even then it's like Toronto, New York or what happens on the West. Like you start thinking and it's like, got to take it one game at a time. But like really at this point, as as a Leafs fan, and, and I've said that before, like I've worked in sports media since whatever, 2010. I've learned how to flip the switch. Like I covered the Ducks for many years. When the Ducks played the Leafs, I wanted the Ducks to win because that was a happy plane ride home. <laughs> if they lost, that's, yeah. do you know how much that ride sucks? I mean, we'd always stay over in Toronto because so many of the guys are from around there. But it's like, I would be, I don't want to have, you know, then everyone be, I don't want to have an angry Randy Carlisle on the Ducks after losing to the Leafs. Definitely not. Um, so I, I've learned how to turn it off. And I think like everyone, everyone who's a Leafs fan has like daddy issues where you're like, I'm not getting involved. I don't want to get emotionally hurt. Like, you know, and you're like, mm, oh, we're going to play either Tampa or Boston. Okay, yeah. Raptors, maybe they can win. You know, it's yeah, just it's the, in your blood. Or Blue Jays. It's, it's the Homer Simpson meme going into Blue the Jays. bushes. That's all it is, yeah. Uh, okay, so a couple quick hitters before we, before we go. Um, uh, I, I already know the answer to this and w- what you think. I think the same thing. You covered the Ducks for a lot of years. Pretty emotional moment with Ryan Getzlaff the other day. You even worked in Regina. That's where Ryan Getzlaff's from. Mm-hmm. So you have ties. Hall of Famer, Ryan Getzlaff? That's so so great you asked that question i thought about that the other day because before game seven of the western conference final against chicago when bruce boudreau was the coach i think it was like 2016 or 2015 i can't even remember what i ate for breakfast i don't know why i would guess what year i remember he bruce boudreau told us he was like this is a hall of fame making game for perry and gets and it was like to get over that hump to kind of like and for him, he needed to win a game seven. He hadn't won one yet. Bruce That's right. Go. That's right. And so, and I love Bruce, by the way. I know you have Vancouver audience. Bruce is like top five people in the world. So I, I'm, I was thinking he's won a Stanley Cup and he has, what, three Olympic gold medals? Does that weigh into it? I think he's a, I think he's a Hall of Famer. He's played with one team. He's been consistently, you know, a huge presence a huge force on that team maybe not as much this year but yes i think ryan gets us a hall of famer uh and and finally um so I, I mentioned you are one of my favorite people to talk to and this is one of my favorite pictures of you uh and oh god i, I know you po- <laughs> I, you you are aware of it you post it uh i laugh every I time i photo. see it uh, and for for our uh our, our podcast listeners you can go to the youtube to see it um but it's just you and your hair is like like you went through a, a hurricane can i explain what happened yeah that's why that's why you're on i want to know the backstory of the picture first of all i just love how happy i am in that photo i have no idea how much of an idiot i look like on national tv in <laughs> america um and so that game was toronto montreal second leg of the Eastern Conference Finals MLS Cup, and it was it went to extra time. It was absolutely banana sandwich. Toronto ends up winning the game, but there's like a light sprinkle of rain the whole time, that, and so that, I had my doesn't look like a light sprinkle, but go are you sure. It was like it, no, no, it was because this plays into it. So it was like a light sprinkle, and then I had my hood, and I would put it up, like oh it's it's raining or whatever, and then I'd be on camera and I like take it down, and I was going up down up down. I had literally no idea I looked like that. I interviewed Josie Altidore. For about 40 minutes after that, I still didn't even know I looked like that, that bad. No one told me. Death taxes, and, and you know this, death taxes, and if you do something wrong or if you look stupid, Twitter.com will come for you. And I, I've, I've been there, too, because I you prob- you might remember this. I was looking at the, the – I'll tell the story some other day on the air, I guess. But I, I was looking at the wrong camera during a Canucks broadcast. And of all people, Keith Olbermann – took three pictures watching the game. He, Keith Olbermann's always watching. He, yes, he's, he's always, always watching, watching, and he's an asshole. Like, like talk about punching down. So he took three pictures, and I admittedly kind of looked stupid, and I, was, I had a, a new haircut that was probably 
too fresh to go on TV and I was looking in the wrong camera and I, I just whatever and but you can make anyone look stupid with the screenshot then he posted him on Twitter and said look at this guy that like wandered onto the the Sportsnet set and whatever everyone celebrated with how stupid I looked and that was fine I can take I can take jokes and and whatever yeah. but I kept waiting for like the DM from Keith to be like hey just kidding buddy and it never came like he just came by smacked. well it must have been pretty legit at that point if he was you know <laughs> oh I, I mean I didn't look he was great was reporting the news on, on what was going on no, yeah I, I guess seen it. I guess but punch up it does right? feel like crap punch when up, someone punch makes fun up. of your what your appearance in that regard That's but true. yes if it looks silly <laughs> It's it's fair game, really. Uh, uh, great catching up. Uh, we'll do it again. We'll do it again soon. Maybe we'll have you on Tuesdays and Thursdays, like twice a week. No, yeah, I'll, okay. I'll invoice you for okay. a double day, a sure. double week. It's yeah. more than I do for old drinks and things. But yeah. um, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. And good luck with the show. Thank it's you very much. This. Thank you very much. That is Julie Stewart Binks. Uh, catch your show, Drinks with Binks. It is on Fubo TV. Uh, you saw her social media handles there as well. Uh, give her a follow. I, I got to admit, we're, we're not necessarily uh, making our living betting on sports. I love sports betting. I think it's fun. I think it adds just a terrific element to being a fan. But I did feel a little pressure. I think we felt a little little pressure to nail our picks last night in uh, or yesterday in, in, in the first episode. And we did. Our, our guest betting analyst, uh, Bik Nazar, went two for two. I went two for two. Yes, please hold your applause. We'll try to keep it going uh, today. We have our game of the day. We have our player of the day. And of course, we have our hedge best bets of the day. And uh, our betting analyst today, we bring in my good friend, real smart guy, uh, Adam Forsyth joins us. Um, and, uh, you know, most notably, I would say known, not really known because it's it's still kind of a, a secret to a lot of people. Adam Forsyth, one of my favorite things about you is that you were a former or I guess still present member of the Green Men. Everyone remembers the Vancouver Canucks super fans that took up, what, two or three years of your life, basically, is all you did was travel across North America being a Green Man. Every night, throw on the green spandex and run around and act a fool and uh, <laughs> had a good time doing it and almost got that Stanley Cup ring out of it. Just one game <laughs> short. So close. And yes, uh, let's say former green man because there's no chance I'm going to fit in that suit anymore. Would, would you have gotten a ring? Is that real? No, I, I don't think we were getting a ring. Well, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. We were... Cup party, for, cup, cup party well, for sure. Let's pull some secrets on the hedge. I don't know if I've shared this publicly before, but... There was some plans if the Canucks won Game 7. Uh, one, the Hockey Hall of Fame had contacted us asking if we would donate our green suits to be put on display in the Hockey Hall of Fame. Come on. Uh, and two, uh, Nike was giving us our own float in the Stanley Cup parade. <laughs> I, uh, I if, believe that. I believe that. And, and those are giant ifs. And then, of course, we all know what happened, and we never heard from the Hockey Hall of Fame or Nike again. Yeah. I, I will admit, I, I love you, man, and I've been happy for all your success, but... Uh, if the Hockey Hall of Fame had a green med exhibit, I don't know how I don't know how I feel about that as, as being somewhat of a purist and a traditionalist, I guess. Fair enough. I went there when I was like a kid and I was so thrilled that like Forsyth is a pretty rare name. And sure enough, there is uh, a Forsyth goalie. He had like five assists in an ECHL game. So there is a Forsyth in the Hall of Fame. No relation to me, but I'll take it. Uh, before we get to our uh, picks of the day, our bets of the day, our Dauber Hockey Player of the Day, um, this is going to be certainly a game that we hit on Thursday, but the Toronto Raptors uh, win last night. Um, what was once a 3 nothing series against Philly is now 3-2 heading back to Toronto and uh, the sheer numbers of this. So Josh Lewenberg uh, sent out this tweet, uh, which is uh, which is pretty good. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, but the series odds now have, have changed. The Toronto Raptors are now a force plus 505 to win this series. The Sixers are minus 667. So whatever, you're not touching that. But plus 505, is that a bet that you would make? Uh man. I we were talking about it off air that I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, plus money betting, but in this situation, I, I don't think it's going to happen. Two more wins against a very good Sixers team, even though they you know struggled last night. I just don't see it. Uh, you saw Bede kind of getting saying like we need James Harden get going. I'm sure he's going to get fired up and. Uh, yeah, two wins is a lot to overcome, especially when you're playing in Philly. 
I mean, if it was a one game winner take all, you're all over plus 505, right? Yeah, yo, absolutely. Yeah, you right. almost have to make that bet. Well, exactly. Why not? Just roll it, the dice. You, you have to make that bet, but it's likely at this point, I feel like they're going to win game six. So, in, in essence, you are making it on one game. Kind of? Maybe. You, all right. I mean, you could talk me into it. Uh, admittedly, like I'm not the the biggest of basketball betters. It's one sport I've kind of stayed away from because of all the ins and outs. There's other people I turn to for that kind of stuff. Uh, I I've definitely tailed you on many. So if you are jumping on the Raptors bandwagon, I'm right <laughs> I, there with you. I don't know. I don't know if I am. I'm I'm rooting for them. Plus five hundred five is great. I'm just trying yeah. to determine still if I make that prior to Thursday. So here's that tweet I was talking about. And if you want to, you know, find out how rare this is, this was Lewinberg, and this is the tweet he said: In the history of the NBA, there's been 146 teams that have lost the best three games of a best of seven series. Have been down three nothing. Raptors are the 14th team of those 146 to force a game six. Only three teams have forced a game seven and exactly zero have come back to win the series. So considering that zero have come all the way back, maybe plus 505 isn't great. <laughs> maybe we should be getting a little bit more, although you would have gotten more if you would have bet them down three nothing, of course. But those are the those, that's the math of it. That's why I think you're seeing that that plus 500 number. Yeah. Uh, but hey, I'm in if you're in. Let's do it. Sure. Okay, I'm in. All these odds, by the way, all the lines we use are available on Cool Bet. Let's get to our game of the day. So this is the game that you might not be betting. Feel free to. Maybe you have a take on it. But it's the game you'll definitely be watching or the game with the most implications. And we have one game of the day because it's both of our game of the day. Uh, it is basically a playoff game in the NHL's Western Conference as far as the wild card is concerned. Vegas uh, is minus 105 at Dallas, minus 111, and the over-under is six goals. The Dallas Stars can clinch a wild card spot with a regulation win. Things get really tough on Vegas if they're not able to win this game. Uh, there's a lot of intrigue on this. I, I said yesterday on the show, Force, that I was... I've been a little, I don't know, Vegas kind of collapsing has made me feel a little bit happy. I'm a little surprised at my own vitriol, but how do you feel this game goes? Yeah, it's weird to watch what's happened in Vegas over the last, say, even a couple of months. There just seems to be some sort of discourse in the locker room. Uh, Peter DeBoer is clearly not getting along with his players. The whole Robin uh, Lehner mystery. Uh, DeBoer's comments pregame today were pretty telling where he said that, you know, what's your thoughts on not having landed the rest of the way? He's like, well, we have the guys that essentially want to be here. <laughs> That's pretty telling if uh, you're recommending one of your players not get surgery. So obviously there's a ton of chaos behind the scenes. I'm all over Dallas on this one. Uh, I, Jake Edinger has been a revelation net for Dallas. Uh, they play kind of that kind of, almost boring, really, shutdown style. And Vegas has the allure of this high-flying offense that just hasn't really existed over the last two months. So I, I'm leaving Dallas on this game. Andrew Walker, Adam Forsyth, as we go through the bets of the day, let's, time, uh, let's get to the Dauber Hockey Player of the Day, brought to you, as always, by the guys at Dauber Hockey, your one-stop shop to win your fantasy league. The 16th annual playoff draft list is now available for download, and this is great. This is like a file where you can kind of customize it. You put in uh, all kinds of scenarios. Let's say you feel it's going to be a, um, a Florida-Nashville final. You put that in, and it'll show you the guys, their projected points, where you should pick them by round, and you can change that up. You go Calgary and Tampa or, or anything like that. Anyways, the 16th annual playoff draft list available for download at Dauber Hockey. So this, we pick our player of the day, uh, generally a prop where, hey, maybe you think a guy's going to get a home run. You're guaranteeing a guy's getting a home run or scoring a goal or, you know, yesterday, Bick hit Max Scherzer over seven and a half strikeouts, which hit easy. No problem. Who is your player of the day today? Yeah, it's big shoes to fill after Bick dominated yesterday. It's so, pretty good. It's pretty uh, impressive. Yeah. It was good, but I am going to go with a little bit. Uh, I'm going to try and up him because I'm going pretty big on the plus money here, but I have a lot of confidence in uh, the Minnesota Wild and Nick Bugstad. They're playing the Coyotes tonight, so I'm expecting them to put up five, six, seven goals. Bugstad's been kind of in and out of the lineup. Injuries, healthy scratch. He's been playing on the fourth line. He's been barely getting 10 minutes of ice time a night, but Max, uh, Matt Zuccarello, he's out. So Bugstad will be on the top line with Hartman and Kaprizov, and he is playing plus 295 to score a goal tonight. Last game he scored, and he played over 14 minutes of ice time. That was the most ice time he's seen 
all season long. He looked very comfortable on that top line, and he's on the second power play unit. So at those odds for a guy getting top line minutes and power play time, I am willing to roll the dice on Nick Bukestad at plus 295. I like it. Plus 295 is a big number on cool bet. I'm going to tail you on that one. Uh, my player of the day is uh, Leon Dreitseidel of the Edmonton Oilers. Um Take him to score. That's fine. He's plus one at 109 to score in Pittsburgh tonight. But I but I like this prop force. I like Leon Dreitseidel over three and a half shots. And I got about four reasons why. Um, number one, you it's it's difficult sometimes to predict goals because, hey, there's defensemen and goalies trying to stop that. But Dreitseidel is in a Rocket Richard race right now with Austin Matthews. So he might not score, but he's going to die trying. And uh, three and a half shots, I think, is very doable for Dreitseidel. It's a big game for Edmonton. They're going to be playing hard. No one's getting any rest. They're one win away from clinching second and home ice in the first round in the Pacific. This number is not crazy considering in 10 of his last 14 games, Dreitseidel has hit four shots or more. In a lot of these cases, it's been five, six, seven. So three and a half shots does not feel like a big task to me. And then adding on on top of it, it's plus money. It's plus 120, not minus 120 for three and a half shots. So Leon Dreitseidel on the shots prop on cool bet is uh, my Dauber hockey player of the day. And your thoughts on that? Yeah, great find by you. I would have expected that one to be minus money, right? So yeah. uh, if you're getting that at plus with the stats to back it up over the last, well, you mentioned 14 games, I'm all in. Okay, so let's go to our best bets. Uh, we went two for two yesterday, the hedge best bets. You're looking at a Toronto Maple Leaf again in classic four style plus money. Yeah, that's my style. I, I don't really bet uh, a large enough quantities for me to be chasing the easy minus money. So I like to find great value at plus odds. And tonight I found that in Mitch Marner. Uh, over one and a half assists is going to pay you plus 195. They're up against the Red Wings. And uh, let me take you back to February, the last time these two teams played. That was that 10-7 shootout game where Mitch Marner oh had my, six yeah. points, four yeah, goals, yeah, yeah. two assists. And before that, when they played in January, he had another great game against the Red Wings, scoring a goal and getting an assist. So uh, in two games against the Red Wings this year, he has eight points. Uh, he clearly loves to play the team in Michigan, and I am all over it tonight. Mitch Marner, uh, over one and a half assists, is plus money, plus 185. Uh, my best bet of the day um, – this is a little complicated because I, I wish there was a, uh, a different line on this, but, but here it is. It's Capitals Islanders under six. Now, it is minus money, one, minus 132. I think this is going to be low scoring. These two teams have played twice this year. They have nine goals combined in those two games. One of them went to overtime, and the Capitals last game lost Alexander Ovechkin, so the biggest goal-scoring threat in this game will not be playing. I wish this was plus money, so I'd like to get it down even more. So I might hit under five at plus 182, but I'm more confident with under six, which is a little minus money at minus 132. But I really feel like this is going to be a 2-2 a, a type of hockey game. It's the Islander style. And as you mentioned, with the question marks surrounding the Uh yeah, that's a, that's a solid find. And I'm confident in the five. I'll, I'll I'll take the five on it. Uh, again, I'm a plus money better, so <laughs> I'll chase it. Hey, uh, I'm looking forward to watching these games tonight. We'll hook up again soon, and uh, yeah, hopefully all these picks are uh, winners. Thanks a lot for this, Force. Cheers. Thanks, Marks. Adam Forsyth, uh, good buddy, smart, sports better, uh, knows his stuff, and of course, fascinating story. One of the uh, one of the green men who uh, rose to fame in the early part of the of last <laughs> decade as the Canucks went to game I just seven met a celebrity. Final. Yeah, a celebrity so, man, he's got so many funny stories. <laughs> I, I could I could talk to him for hours uh, before we go. If you are listening or watching the first couple episodes of the hedge, it's a quick heads up for you. Um, just dropped this afternoon in the Vancouver province, uh, a bit of an article, a bit of a profile on what we're doing here on the hedge. Uh, Patrick Johnson uh, for the Vancouver province wrote this. I actually have yet to read it. Uh, believe it or not, I will do so after the show. <laughs> Hopefully the, like the headline's not good. And then he just rips the show after. I'm sure he doesn't. <laughs> but uh, the headline reads uh, with the hedge. Andrew Walker hopes to take Canadian sports talk in a new direction. And we definitely do feel that way here on the hedge between myself and uh, and Johnny and uh, Ryan Jesperson. 
Um, we really feel that, that this is the new space and the way things are going. Um, and so, yeah, a little reading for you. Give Patrick Johnson a little read and some love uh, in the Vancouver province. You can find that uh, online. Tomorrow, there are three Canadian teams heading to the Stanley Cup playoffs, um, providing a miracle does not happen tonight um, in the games to keep Vancouver alive. Uh, and if it is, hey, all the better. But tomorrow we'll check in on one of them. Jack Michaels is the awesome play-by-play man of the Edmonton Oilers. Super entertaining. He's going to join us on the hedge on tomorrow's edition. Go to thehedgepod.com. You can like, subscribe, check out our YouTube, and subscribe to our audio podcast as well, Spotify, and uh, wherever you get your podcast. And consider joining our Patreon as well. We'll talk to you tomorrow. This is The Hedge, a relay podcast. The Hedge is hosted by Andrew Walker. Technical producer, John Hicks. Managing director, Josh Dunford. Account coordinator, Lawrence Derlago. General manager, Katie Cook Chivers. Voiceover by me, Sylvia Fox. The Hedge is a relay podcast. For more, check out thehedgepod.com.